And now to Mount Trebevich, Bob Sledding, Tim Brandt. As the snow falls and the race to the gold continues here at Trebevich, Wolfgang Hoppe is still in first place, followed by his East German countryman Bernhard Lehmann. The Soviets are third and fourth. Less than a second splits the top four contenders. So the pressure is mounting for the final heat. Wolfgang Hoppe is our leader. Remember, unheralded coming into the games, the youngest of the East German drivers having a tremendous Olympic performance. 51.06 was his time. After the third heat, his brakeman Dietmar Schomerhauer, a former 100-meter sprinter. They know they have to have a good run as they come down this hill, treacherous with snow. It snowed for three straight days. The East Germans and Soviets at the top of the leaderboard. An expressionist in sports, when somebody's hot, they're hot. He's hot. He's got a great start time, a great, great through lines through five, six, and seven. Let's watch for a split time here out of seven. Let's see if he's on his game. There's his split time. He's on his game again, Timmy. No doubt this guy is hot as the expression. Through Omega with 576 meters to go. Down into the toughest part of this course. He's perfect at the fastest part of the course. He puts that foot any place he wants. Let's watch him in the finish. The final curve, the whip around. He bends for Dare Aerodynamics. His time. 51.06, the same as his third heat time, puts him in first place. Unbelievable consistency to come down this treacherous course at two exact same times. That also puts the pressure on the other drivers. They have yet to come down this hill. This is Hopi at curve 90. Slow. This gives him the chance to put his foot exactly where he wants, sets himself up at the crucial part of the course, which is elaborate. Comes off low, sets himself up coming into the take on. Right here, he's on the corner exactly where he wants to be. Now he's all set for the crucial part of the course. Typical East German consistency. This is Bernhard Lemon, East Germany. He's got a shot at the goal. Well, and he I, knows it. Look I, at his concentration. I tell you, he's got to come down at a sub 51 time to take the gold medal away from his countryman Hoppe. Hoppe just came down at two times, 51.06, 51.06. Consistency. Lehman will do the same. 6.42, great start. The East Germans do everything so right in this sport. One of the favorites coming in. Now he knows that he's got to drive this course better than anyone has yet. There he goes, off of four. He puts that sled exactly where he wants to be, on the take on early, lower than the cuts. Here he goes into six and seven. The brake was tucked perfectly, out of six. Now we go into seven. Instinct, reflex, taking him through double S. Watch for the split time. He's fast, 32.92. He's a little bit slower than last time, considerably. Now into the time-tested curves as we go down to the labyrinth. This is where the drivers with the eye-hand coordination are the best. The grooves are there as they come around the final curve. The cheer comes up from the crowd. He's a little bit high on that curve. His time, 51.36. That'll put him in second place behind Wolfgang Hoppe. His aggregate time, 3.26.04. Boy, the East Germans do everything so right. Uh, it's unbelievable to watch him compete in this sport. Bernhard Lehmann, definitely in contention for one of the medals. This is USA number one, the final run for Brent Rushlaw and his brakeman Jimmy Tyler. They don't have a chance for a medal, presently in 15th place. The time they need to take the lead, 47-21, virtually impossible. The fastest time on this track is 51.06, and that's a course record. They get a super heat, though. They can move ahead of a couple Austrians, and the Canadians just barely ahead of them. It's much for split 670. That's normal what he's been getting in the start time. Brent doesn't have the quality sled that the Soviets and the East Germans do, but he's now the pilot. Now he's driving for pride. He's been excellent in the second heat of this competition. Second and fourth heats, he's been very, very good. Let's watch for his foot time here, down out of seven. The only U.S. Bob driver to appear in three straight Olympic games. He will also drive the four-man number one sled. 372 and 200 is better than his last heat, Timmy. Through Omega, he's pulling four Gs as he comes through here. Through curve nine, heading to the labyrinth. Nice flying through line. He's got some good, this is the fastest part of the course. He looks nicely clean through here. Rushlow drives the labyrinth as well as any of the drivers in this competition. The final curve through and down, a time of 52.40, a fine time for Brent Rushlow. Yeah, only 500 slower than his previous time. It's very, very consistent, very good for Brent Rushlow. Brent Rushlaw, an outstanding pilot. We'll see him again next weekend in the four-man competition. So these are the standings. The glory goes to East Germany. Wolfgang Hoppe is in first place. East Germany number one. Bernhard Lehmann, East German number two. The Soviets yet to come.
Third heat, this is his last chance. He is trying to catch the East Germans and his own countryman, Sintizik Manis. Now, Kippers was one of the favorites in this competition and had a terrible first heat. Since then, he's come back. So much has been said about these Soviet sleds and their good times that they're possibly dangerous because they're small, but the Soviets have time-tested their sleds. Let's go back to 1981. It was the World Cup Championships in Cortina. Inexperienced Soviet drivers were competing in an unfamiliar sport on a treacherous course. This is Giannis Kippur. The Russians crashed often in their first season, suffering embarrassment and bruises in their first international competition. Giannis Kippers, his brake man. Ivar Schneps, mentally getting ready, knowing this is their last chance at a medal. Tell you, they have not had the start times we thought they were going to get. We saw them in Innsbruck be 1,500 better than anybody else. They only have the best start times, and this was the best starting team in the world. There was rumor they had flu earlier in the week. Maybe that's an effect here. Best start time on the left, 6.40. There, 6.34. Unbelievable start time. That wasn't there in the first team, so let's watch. Oh, he hit there. There's a lot of problems between these quarters, two and three. Giannis Kippers. This is Sigmanis, yet to come. Uh, he has to have great times through 5, 6, and 7 in order to win this gold medal. Out of 7, he's got to have a sub-33 split time. Let's watch for it. 32, 92. 32, 90. Down the straightaway into Omega, 576 meters to go. Giannis Kippers racing to a medal. Great split time in his team. He's on it. Fastest part of the course. Around the final whip around, the time on the left, the time he needs, his time on the right, 51-14, puts him in third place. Tremendous time for the Soviet, 51-14, only 800 top the best time of the day. 3.26-42, the aggregate time for Giannis Kippers. This is Zinta Zygmanis, Soviet Union's number two sled, in prime position for a medal. His countryman, Giannis Kippers, has already gone. Now this is his last chance to beat the East Germans and his own fellow countrymen, Giannis Kippers. If he attacks this course like Kippers, he's got a chance, because Kippers came down a tremendous time, and we remember Kippers bumped a little bit up top. You know he's thinking about it. You know the pressure is mounted. Now we saw these drivers at Eagles in Innsbruck, Austria. Do you think Ekmanis is a better driver than Kippers? Well, the East Germans had four perfect heats. The Soviets each had one bad heat. I think Ekmanis is going to be on his number right here. He has had spectacular start times, mainly because of Vladimir Alexandrov, his brake man. Again, the Soviets are a tremendous starting team. 634 is their teammate. 639 speaks for itself. Now, this is where they have the problems here between quarters two and three. Let's watch for any skids. He's clean, Tim. He's very clean. He's on his number. Trying to get comfortable here before he gets to the extremely tight turns below. A little bit of trouble coming there. out of there. Yeah, he had a clean problem there yesterday. Clean problem there yesterday. Watch him at six and seven now. That's going to cost him. Let's watch for his foot time out of seven. He needs a sub-33 split time. Let's look for it. 3301, 3290, that was his countryman's time on the left. He's behind his countryman considerably. Down into the labyrinth, the tough turn, getting into the course. I don't think he's got a good heat going here at this countryman. He's got to watch out. Had trouble at the final curve. The time on the left is what he needs. His time, 5126, puts him in third place. His aggregate time, 32616. That looks to me it might be the first Soviet medal ever in bobsledding. He knows it. He's got his hands up, and that's considered an upset because Kippers was the favorite of the two Soviets. He beat his countryman, Giannis Kippers, their first Olympic bob appearance, and they know they have got a medal coming at the ceremonies later. But the day really belonged to these two, Wolfgang Hoppe and his brakeman, Dietmar Schauerhammer. Hoppe, a spectacular driver, potentially as great as some of the legends of the sport, the likes of Billy Fisk, Eugenio Amati, and Meinhard Neymar. So the final standings in the two-man bobsled competition. East Germany, number two, with a tremendous time of 325.56, takes the gold. Bernhard Lehmann of East Germany is second, and the Soviet Union, Zinta Sigmanis and Vladimir Alexandro win the bronze in their first ever Olympic competition. The United States finished 15th and 17th. We'll be back to Mount Trebevich next Friday and Saturday for the big sleds, the four-man bobsled competition. So for John Morgan, this is Tim Brandt saying so long from Mount Trebevich. <laughs>